Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I will be showing you two different types of screens an LCD screen and an OLED screen. I will be discussing the differences between these two types of screens and how their brightness controls work. I will then be showing you how to build an instrument that will measure the waveforms coming out of the screen that your naked eye can't see. This will allow you to see them on this oscilloscope right here, and it'll further help you understand how these brightness controls work. So let's get started by figuring out how these two different types of screens work. So the first screen that I will be discussing is an LCD screen, which stands for Liquid Crystal Display. Now, this screen is found in many, many devices, including almost every single Apple device. Now, the way the backlight inside this screen works is it is one uniformly um, powered LED panel on the back. So this uh, light in the back can be controlled, its brightness can be controlled through a simple linear regulator that's controlled by the phone's internal software. Now, this means that it'll have a clean signal going to the light. So the light will be a clean DC voltage because the linear regulator is uh, very regulated. And so that way when you adjust the brightness bar on the iPod, it will adjust the voltage linearly. Now, on the top there are LCD panels, which pretty much are little panels that can be dimmed based on if there's electricity applied. Then this dark part is covered by a piece of filter. You can see through my microscope, there are three separate colors, all covered by the color filter. These are the different colors that make up your screen. It is more green because just the green color filter is illuminated. And on one side, it's more white because all the color filters were illuminated. Now, this is how the LCDs inside many of these devices work. But this is not so much how the screens on OLED devices work, such as this Pixel. These phones use a wide variety of small organic LEDs, hence the name OLED, organic LED. These use tiny, tiny LEDs that are all spaced evenly on this screen. And to get the different colors, each LED lights up as a different color. This can be seen under my microscope right here. Each of those red, green, and blue dots are a different light emitting diode or LED. And these all light up in different brightnesses and ways to get the different colors that you see on the screen. This method is called pulse width modulation, PWM, and this means that the screen will turn on each individual LED multiple times per second in a way such as this. So if we have an LED that's being turned on a few thousand times per second at a certain duty cycle, which means how long it's on versus how long it's off, then it'll change the brightness because if it's on a clean DC voltage, it'll be bright. If it's on a voltage that looks like this, to the human eye, it'll look slightly dimmer. This means that every single LCD in this OLED display is being controlled at one of these PWM frequencies to make it dimmer, hence the brightness control. Now, this PWM frequency cannot be seen by the naked eye. So, in order to see this PWM frequency on the OLED display inside this phone, we're going to have to build an instrument. Now to build this instrument, we will be using something called an LDR, or light dependent resistor. Now a light dependent resistor is a resistor, but its resistance can change based on the amount of light um, going into it. Now this is useful because if we put one of these uh, LDRs on top of the screen of a phone, the different PWM signals of the brightness of the phone will go into this small light dependent resistor and change its resistance according to the frequency of the actual screen brightness.
Now, in order to see the frequency differences through this light dependent resistor, we'll need to build a circuit. Now, we'll have a power supply right here, which will be about 4 volts DC. And then this power supply will go through first a 1K resistor, actually a 5K resistor. And then it will go again through this LDR or light dependent resistor before it goes to ground. Now, what happens is if we just had the current flowing through a light dependent resistor, we wouldn't see much because the current, the voltage would be the same going across the whole thing, which means that we have to have it in a voltage divider format, which means that we have our probe coming out of the middle between these two resistors. Now, this works because the current flowing through this circuit changes based on uh, the resistance or light going through this LDR. But in order to see this current, we will have to put another resistor above the LDR because the voltage drop across the resistor is based on the current according to Ohm's law. Now to build this circuit, what we'll do is we'll connect ground to one side of the resistor and then we'll connect positive to one side of the LDR. We'll then connect both sides together and hook it up to a probe of an oscilloscope. We'll hook the ground of the oscilloscope to the ground of the power supply. With that, we can turn on the oscilloscope and turn on the power supply, and we should be ready to see some waveforms. Now, on the oscilloscope, you will need to remember to set this knob to alternating current because this means there's a blocking capacitor in between the output of our little LDR circuit and the oscilloscope. This is good because it blocks all the DC voltages, so everything we see on the oscilloscope screen is just AC. It'll also need to be turned down to about 50 millivolts. So as you can see, we can take the LCD screen and adjust the brightness on it with the LDR circuit on top of it, and you won't see much of a difference on the oscilloscope screen. Now. This completely changes when we turn off the LCD screen and insert a OLED screen. So I will hover the LDR over the little white home button of my Android device. And as soon as that happens, you can see a waveform appear on the oscilloscope. This waveform is what is coming from the screen of this device when it is operating at about 50% brightness. As you can see, when the screen brightness is increased, the waveform turns on longer than it is turned off. And as the brightness is increased to full brightness, you can see that the waveform is in such a way that it is on for much longer than it is off. As you can see here, it turns on and then turns off. When I sweep through the whole brightness spectrum on the phone, you can see how the frequency vastly changes. Right here, when it's at low brightness, you can see that it is only on for just a little bit of the time, and then turns off gradually, then turns on, and turns off gradually. This LDR setup can actually be pointed upwards at a fluorescent light bulb to see a nice 120 hertz sine wave. Now, the reason it's 120 hertz is because that is what the ballast of the fluorescent light tubes uh, create, and I'll explain that sometime later. Now, as you can see, it is really cool to be able to build an instrument that actually lets you see how the brightness works in two different types of screens. So, that is how you build a small frequency measuring light instrument, and how the different brightness controls of two different types of screens works. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next time because in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to change uh, differences in light into sound.